this can be a tricky little decision. The F91 or the A158? Hey guys, my name is Ben Arthur, this is Ben's Watch Club, and today we'll be comparing two very popular and similar Casio watches. Online, I've seen a surprising amount of people struggling to understand small differences between these two watches. In many ways, they are identical. So I figured I'd make this video to assist those of you who are unsure of which to go for. In reality though, they're both so low cost, you can probably afford to pick up both if you wanted. But hopefully this will give you some idea of which may be best for you. If you want to grab one of these, I'll leave links to both of them in the video description. First off, we have the Casio F91W. This is often considered the most popular watch in the world, or at least the piece that sold the most units. Introduced in 1991, the simple digital design, fame durability, and super low cost instantly proved successful. The regular version of this watch has been manufactured in four countries simultaneously, from what my research tells me, Japan, Malaysia, China, and Thailand. To be honest, I'm not sure if that's still the case. However, quality control seems to be pretty good across the board from what I've read online. The bulk of the watch case is made of black resin, other than the rear which has a slim layer of stainless steel. It's a relatively square shape overall, coming in at 34mm in width and 38mm lug to lug. When combined with the 8.5mm depth, it's clear that this is quite a small watch. And overall, it's a very wearable size, especially for slim wrists like mine. The default strap ship with the watch is also black resin. It's not the best quality out there, but realistically, it's really comfortable and has a ton of holes to suit various wrist sizes. I have heard stories of these wearing down after a few years, but my only real point of reference comes from my dad. He's had two of these watches in a row and the straps have lasted over a decade on each of them. So I'd say that's pretty decent. Then in the silver corner, we have the A158W. I believe this metallic variant was released slightly later following the success of the F91. And once more design wise, it does look a lot like some of the Casios from the 80s. And when you put them side by side, as you can tell, they're near enough identical. In fact, internally they are. Both contain the same low cost Japanese quartz movement and the functions operate in exactly the same manner. Unfortunately, Casio don't give as much information about these. As far as I know, the A158W is predominantly made in China. They do make an A159 version, which you may have come across. They're supposedly made in Japan, but they are somewhat more expensive. Aesthetically, there are a couple of noticeable differences. While both cases are constructed of resin, the A158 has a high shine finished silver case. Also, the lugs are of a slightly more standard design, but aren't drilled. You'll need to use a spring bar tool to remove the default strap from beneath. The lugs on the F91 are rather concealed in comparison, but are drilled, making strap removal a fraction easier. I personally slightly prefer the lugs on the A158. I think it makes the watch look slightly less square. Size-wise, both watches are the same, but curiously, the dial design is slightly different. The digital display remains the same, containing the infamously weak backlight. However, the area surrounding it is slightly different. While the F91 has the model name proudly on display at the top corner, the A158 simply says Alarm Chrono instead. Outside of this, there are also a few other minor cosmetic differences in the position of the text. Both also feature the same acrylic glass. Overall though, unless you're looking up close, they still look extremely similar. One area that is clearly different is the strap. The A158W typically comes with an adjustable stainless steel folded link bracelet. This is likely the reason that this version is more expensive. That being said, both are available on Amazon for a ridiculously low cost anyway, normally under £20 each, but you'll normally be able to pick up the F91 for about half the price. Overall, the bracelet is fine considering the cost, though some people find it to pinch hairs. In all truth, I've never really found that, but maybe I'm just not hairy enough. The previously mentioned A159W, which is made in Japan, that also does feature a slightly different type of stainless steel strap. But as I mentioned earlier, they are slightly more expensive and more difficult to come across. Overall, the main differences you're gonna get with these is the strap and the overall color. And as such, I think that the watches do have a slightly different appeal. The F91 is clearly more subtle and casual. I think it's matte black colorway and simple strap make it the more practical choice. The finish also tends to make scratches a bit less visible. You haven't got the light bouncing off from different angles. 
This could work especially well if you're after a small, simple watch for manual labor or similar activities. I'd say this is also the slightly more comfy option out of the two, but both are still easy wearers to be honest. The A158 on the other hand is definitely classier. Overall, for me at least, I find the color makes this one far more wearable and stylish. While there's no luxury dress watch, I think it's a better watch for most situations, so it's certainly my favorite. If you're bothered somewhat about style, this is definitely the optimal choice. I think it's got some retro charm at least. There are also some slightly chunkier Casio digital watches available these days, such as the A168, which is fractionally bigger. That's like the daddy version of the A158. Hopefully I'll be able to get hold of one of them soon to compare. Which of these do you prefer? Also, where should we place the F91W on the wall of watches? Is it absolute garbage? Uncool, cool, or ice cold? In the last episode, you voted on the Casio LTP Sapphire. That one got a bit of a mixed response. Some people loved it. Some people thought it was just meh. We even got a few people saying that it was ice cold, but I think the overall consensus was that this was a cool watch. So that's where it's going. But either way, let me know your thoughts on these digital ones and I'll see you in the next video.